Stop, stop. This is why. This is why all nations are coming to America. Folks, there's a book called the American Holocaust. You can get this book on Amazon. Now, let me tell you something. The river Euphrates right now is dried up. When you go to Revelation 16, it says when the river Euphrates is dried up, that the men from the east are coming over. And get this, folks. Putin and all of his hosts are coming to the Americas. These so-called Negroes, black, colored, African-Americans. We've had many names. Whatever you want to call them, they are actually the original Indians in the Americas. Let me read a little excerpt from this book. It says... And just 21 days after the first atomic test in the desert, the Japanese industrial city of Hiroshima was leveled by a nuclear blast. Never before had so many people, or at least 130,000, probably many more, die from a single explosion. Now, just 21 years after Columbus' first landing in the Caribbean and vast, vastly populous island that ex Explorers had re renamed Hispaniola was effect effectively desolate. Nearly, get this folks, get this, nearly 8 million people, those Columbus chose to call Indians, had been killed by violence, disease, and despair. Now, it took a little longer, about a span of a single human generation, but what happened on Hispaniola was equivalent to more than 50 Hiroshima's and Hispaniola's was the only beginning. Folks, what happened to the Negroes, the so-called Negroes, or what you would call colored black, or Jesse Jackson renamed us African-American, this sellout? This is what was renamed because in 1781, if we did not say that we were what we call so-called uh, Americans and changed our name from our original tribal names, guess what? We could not get any reservation land. Let me keep reading. It says, Within no more than a handful of generations following the first encounters with the Europeans, the vast majority of the Western Hemisphere natives' peoples had been exterminated. It says the peace and the magnitude of their ob obliteration vary from place to place and from time to time. But for years now, historical demogra uh, demographicers have been uncovering a region upon region of post-Columbian depopulation rates. Now get this, it says between 90 and 98% with such regularity that an overall decline of 95% had become a working rule of thumb. Now remember the Lord said with his children that they will be as numerous as the sands of the sea, but they will be what in the last days? There'll be a remnant. And this is when this all started happening. What this means is that there's on the average, this is what it says. It says what this means is that on average for every 20 natives alive at the moment of the Europeans' contacts, it says when the lands of the Americas teem with numerous tens of millions, get this, it was tens of millions of us here, folks. We didn't come from Africa. It says only one stood in their place when the bloodshed was over. So it says here, you had tens of millions and out of this, if you had 20 navies alive, only one stood in its place. To put this in a contemporary uh, context, the ratio of native survivorship in America's following European contact was less than half of what human survivorship ratio would be in the United States today if every single white person and every single black person died today. The destruction of the American Indians was far away the most massive and genocidal in history of the world. We're the ones with the real Holocaust, folks. This is how you know who Jacob's true children are. This, it says here that this, it says that is why one of the historians aptly has said from historic and romantic um, harlotry and customarily it is to symbolize the European settlement of the Americas, an emblem of congruent with the reality would be as uh, you say the, the reality of this would be a, like a pyramid of skulls that's how many bones and bodies that they would find I'm gonna read another article here just a little short brief caption of what was going on you know when I was reading this book I learned that with little babies they would cut them out and out of the woman while she was standing alive and with our people they would take the little three-year-olds and do things to them that it's unspeakable but right here it says that captain al sano lopez de alva brother-in-law of al delinto Magetto, captured during the war in barcelonian a young indian woman of a lovely gracious appearance she was beautiful she had promised her husband now she was betrothed um it says fearful at least they should kill him in war 
not to have relations with any other man but him. And she and so no persuasion was sufficient to prevent her from taking her own life. So she said no matter what happened, she was not going to cheat on her husband. Remember, these men came over, they didn't bathe, they were stink, and they had disease all over them. They were defiled. Now, one thing you'll read in this book also is when they came over, they came over with 100 pit bulls, excuse me, with 100 horses, 20 pit bulls and bull mastiffs, you understand? And this is what they would do is put gold teeth in their mouth or silver so that these dogs, when you would hit them, you couldn't break their teeth and they would feed people alive. This is the history of the American Holocaust, folks. Stop being lied to. Stop being indoctrinated and understand that this land was taken from the indigenous people. But get this, get this. There's men coming from the east and they're going to return all things back, not just them. But in Ezekiel chapter 36, the Lord said he's going to gather all nations, return the wealth back to his children. There's been major line going on right here. I'm showing you a map, an old ancient map. And as you can see, the so-called Negroes, African-Americans, which we have nothing to do with Africa. We came out in 70 AD with General Vaspin and Titus when he put a slaughter. You learn when you read Second Ezra, and when you go into those books, chapter 13, you learn that Hosea, uh, the Assyrian king, when in the old days we were brought over what you would call to the Americas or called Azareth, we were, we were brought over the seas. It was quelled. No man lived here. So the ancient Phoenicians or what you would call the ancient Hebrews were here a long time ago. That's why the step pyramids that you see have altars on top. But if you go into the land of Ham, their pyramids, there are no altars. They're straight pointed. There's no worshiping there because they're from Ham and we're from Shin. When you read Deuteronomy and you start at Deuteronomy beginning, it tells of the blessings that our people would have had if we would hearken or listen to the Most High. The Lord said if we would listen to him, that he would prosper us and everywhere we would go. But he said if we didn't listen and we went to other gods of wood and stone, that pestilence, disease would follow us. He said well, we'll build a house, but we wouldn't own it. He said that we would also tend the field and land, but we would not reap the benefits of the crops. He said that we would have a daughter and she will be sold and we have longing eyes and never see her again. He said, as a matter of fact, you got to go to your enemies for food and clothes. That's why the people who actually own the slaves, they own Walmart, CNN, Facebook, all these other places because they're the ish. And these people took our identity a long time ago. But now the Lord is returning us back to our identity. He said, I will make you drunk, but not with strong wine. I will take your prophets and your seers away. And that happened to us. We know that these things happened when we fell in 70 AD. And then when the ten and a half tribes were brought to the Americas, because of them going to different gods of wood and stone, serpent gods and things of so forth and so on, that these people who you call Europeans were allowed to come into this nation. And as it said in Deuteronomy, pestilence. And we just read that when the Europeans came in, that over a hundred or so million of us died from disease and the rest they eradicated with hanging. And then they did it also with raping, murder and ravaging. And the last part of it, the last what's going on right now is actually what happened in the beginning because a lot of our people still being killed. We are the remnant. We are the lost tribes of Israel. But at the same time, we gotta be a light to everyone else. And these things that happen to us, we'll make sure that when we come into power, it will never happen to another nation. Know who you are and understand that everything's been whitewashed, bamboozled, hoodwinked, ran amok, and everybody has been led astray.